Now you know we usually do an intro for Nation, but this week I had something cool and it was actually with Jim Dubois. We were taking pieces of audio for some other footage that I'm doing on my personal YouTube channel, uh, Jersey underscore Nation, by the way. And it came out to be so awesome and the time fit and it just worked. So I made it into an episode of WCR Nation. It's a really good kind of questions on a really big company and I thought you'd like it but I didn't plan on making this an episode so the beginning doesn't have an intro so here's your intro you know who I am I'm Jersey from windowcleaner.com and shameless plug I'm a rep so let me know if I can put anything in for you uh, order small or big my number is 862-312-2026 and go check out AWC magazine it's awcmag.com. Go get a subscription. I'd absolutely appreciate it. I know the beginning's kind of weird, but we're going to jump right into it. So here it is with Jim Dubois. All right, so we are here with the man, the myth, the legend, and a lot of people know you. A lot of people have seen you out there. You don't probably remember this but you were one of the big reasons i got into route like a hundred years ago uh, i know you're a lot younger than that but um i mean you know you've been everywhere kind of in business and and people know your name you're one of those guys that walks around and people kind of know you but for anybody who's new in the industry or anybody who just hasn't been out there maybe living under a rock tell us kind of who you are and give us a quick synopsis of your company and what you do now sure and thank you for having me on here this is uh this is fantastic um i'm just a regular guy you know i uh i started like everybody else starts i i'm a college dropout i moved out i used to live in indiana i moved to the jersey shore and like most kids and you know at 19 years old i was looking for a job and and i i saw an ad in the asbury park press uh, about window cleaning and I'm like, well, how hard can this be? And uh, I, I showed up. I was smart enough to show up in a suit and tie. And I had the job probably within five minutes for a window cleaning job, right? And it was for route work, uh, commercial storefront route work. And uh, I loved it. I just loved it. But I always had that, that little feeling in the back of your head, you know, that entrepreneurial bug. Like, what could I do? What could I do? And it, it almost was a matter of being at the right place at the right time. A mind shift occurred with this particular job I had linking to business. And that's how I got started in the industry. And um, I guess the quick over to that is I uh, worked for this gentleman for a year. I learned the trade and decided to try to do this on my own. And Dunright Window Cleaning was born at the Jersey Shore. And did that for a while. And I got to tell you, the days were meager. I was eating on $3 a day trying to get this little route work business that I had started uh, off the ground. Um, I'd go to breakfast at Casey's Deli for 99 cents for eggs. And, you know, remember those days, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd go hit the, uh, the the sub place for the for the bologna sub for a dollar because I couldn't afford the turkey. And then I would hit a nightclub uh, to buy a Coke for a buck and I got access to the buffet. And that's how it was for me in the beginning, getting this thing off the ground. And uh, but you know what? It got off the ground and yeah. uh, that little business turned into 600 storefronts. Um, I had a little bit of residential going on, about 300 houses a year. I had a couple guys that kind of worked with me and life was pretty daggone good, even though I wasn't making tons of money. But I had my own thing going. And uh, fast forward, I moved down here to the Carolinas and started Squeegee Pros. That was in 1996, so uh, many years behind me in that regard. But you know what? When I moved down here, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I had a couple of ideas, and I happened to walk into a mattress store, and the windows were just so dirty. And you know, when you're in the business, it's the first thing you look at when you walk oh, yeah. into a store or a restaurant. And I'm like, you know what? I got to pitch the guy on the window cleaning. If he says yes, I'm going to start another window cleaning business. And you know what? You know what the chance is, right? Maybe five or 10% that is that the person is going to say, yeah, start me up. Because, you know, yeah. when you're out there walking the street trying to get stores, uh, you got to walk a lot of stores. He said yes. And I was like, okay, I, I'll be here in a couple of days. I, I mean, I was brand new down here. 
And and I that's how Squeegee Pros was born. And I did start in the commercial storefront side and large commercial, and then we got into residential. And today, um, it's it's a successful. It's a multi million dollar company. There's a, a number of phenomenal people that work at the office. I've got great leadership. And you know, when I when I look back on this, I, I have to pinch myself because it's window washing. <laughs> I mean, window washing and what can actually be done when you put business acumen behind it. Stuff I did not know many, many yeah. years of trying to figure all that stuff out. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of kind of my story and I'm sticking to it. There you go. Yeah, you said like window washing, that part that it, it doesn't make sense, you know, to when you really step back and think about it. But was there one moment when you kind of looked at this thing, you know, and said, oh, I could instead of just kind of doing this job, I could run a company instead of doing the job, right? Like instead of just focused on, hey, I need a, a few more jobs to kind of make a few bucks. Was there a specific moment you remember that was this is going to be a thing? Yeah. And, and it does take me back to the Jersey Shore uh, with my first window cleaning company because I was very aggressive out there to pick up stores. And I had quickly rather quickly put a route together and i'm like okay i'm kind of maxed out i want to keep growing this business uh i guess i hire someone and train them so like a little bit that a little bit of that started to come into play and i hired my first guy to do a route and i started building another route and and then i would have some houses come into play too but it was just a little bit of that was coming into my head during the, my early 20s when I had that business going. There was no business acumen whatsoever. Yeah. And, and, but when I moved down here and I walked out of the mattress store and made the decision that I was going to do this, yes, that's when that really clicked for me because I can remember walking out of the store and I said to myself, okay, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to build the biggest window cleaning company that Charlotte, North Carolina has ever seen. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I just put my head down in the trenches and I just started like yeah. all of us do, right? We just start. And I would just come up for air every once in a while to catch my breath and I'm back down there doing it again. And I just didn't stop. And, yeah. and, and it, and it, so yeah, that's how that started to click for me. But it was, it was after that where I began again, hiring my first person, second person, third person, but then I, I guess as the internet was beginning to evolve, there's more information that you would have access to. I started reading some different books and starting trying to understand this whole business side of it. And it's a long road and it's a hard oh, yeah. road because all these different opinions and perspectives, and I'm trying to just gather this piece of information, that piece of information, trying to compartmentalize it into something that would make sense to try to actually kind of going back to what you were saying before, getting away from the, um, the job that you call a business and taking a business and turning it into a company. And that yeah. was absolutely something that was taking place down here. Yeah. Now, with, with the hustle side, I mean, you either have that or you don't, but people are always listening and watching stuff like this to kind of hear a tidbit, right? That, that thing, that, that one piece other than hustle, because like I said, you have it or you don't there. What's like, what was your key to growth? Like if, if mm -hmm. you were to start this all over again and you said, I can give you one piece of information, what is that key to growth, do you think? Burning desire. Um, I wanted this so bad, so bad. I was willing to do the uncomfortable I was willing to step out of my comfort zone, and I did many, many times, because when you want something bad enough and you have such passion behind it, you're going to figure out a way. And, yeah. and if I were to follow that up with, I'd follow it up with three words, just don't quit. Just keep swinging yeah. the bat. The, yeah. the home runs are there. And, and it's exactly what happened with me. And I got to go back to the beginning. I'm, I am nobody special at this at all. I just, it probably, I'm probably the guy, I'm like the turtle, right? There's the rabbits and the foxes that just get to where they want to go so fast. Not me. I'm the turtle. I, it takes me a while, but I'll probably get there in the end because I just won't quit. 
Yeah. 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 That's, that's great. I like that analogy. Um, but you've been, you know, from, you've been in the industry for a lot longer than some of the people even listening have been alive, <laughs> which I mean, proves right there with, uh, the knowledge of, of kind of everything you've gone through. You've had different markets, you've had different economies, you've had all that stuff, but you've been big and you've been small, right? Mm -hmm. There's pros and cons to each. And when somebody is watching this type of thing or listening, they may be currently an owner operator who only wants to stay that they may be an owner operator that wants to do, you know, hiring and getting bigger. They may be already big and they kind of remember the good old days for you. What was that? <laughs> what was that pro and the con of being small and big? Were there good things to both? And what do you think those are? Yeah, there, there definitely is. Uh, the, the cons to, well, if, if you go back to when I was the owner operator, bringing a first person on, the, the pros to that is it's simple. It's not yeah. hard. It's really just the skill set that, that has to be on point. Just do the jobs, make the money and go home. It's, it's just not difficult to do that. And that's why, and I call it stage one. This is where so many are. Um, but the, the cons to this is breaking out of that mold to get bigger. Yeah. And, and it's almost like I call it walking into a stage two operation. It's hard. You're, you start hiring other human beings other than yourself. We know what that's like. Yeah. You know, you're trying to get a, a hat or two off of your head, get out of the truck. Those are the cons from going when you're small, but you're trying to reach out of that. Um, and I am the epitome of that for sure, because uh, it was a long, hard road. And you know what? Most don't make it. Most don't get beyond small. And when they yeah. try to step into that arena of getting beyond small, they just kind of put their hands up and say, you know what? I'll just go back to being small because it was easy. Yeah. Yeah, 100 percent. That that's the hardest part when you start a company is to start. I mean, you go from non-secure to secure, or I should say what you think is secure to non-secure. It's the same thing when you jump to that next level. You almost you almost have that fear again because now it's like, well, now I'm responsible for other human beings and their livelihood. So it's, it's, a, it's a tough jump, really, uh, for sure. Now, going back kind of to every stage that you've had, if you were able to go back and tell yourself, something that you needed to hear at that time like what's that one piece of advice that you'd kind of you'd kind of wish you could kind of go back and tell yourself and you'd think you'd be a lot farther along even than you are now because uh you would have known that i think one part of that for me would be when you start bringing people into your organization one of the areas that i really struggled with was i was a a micromanager. I could not delegate anything. I overshadowed. Uh, I was just always over somebody's shoulder in their face. I just had a really, really hard time letting go. And if there's advice to put out there in that regard, it would be trust your people, trust your policies, whatever that looks like, trust your systems as they start to come together and, and let the company let the people that the, the systems that you're building out run the company. Yeah. And I had these things going on, but I had that, I guess I'm wired that way. And I'm not so much now, now I'm the complete opposite of that. I don't want to do anything, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I also trust what I've created now. And, and even though I trusted what I created in the past, I just had a really, really hard time letting go. Will they do it as good as me? Yeah. 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 That's the hard part is uh, getting the right people around you, but, you know, taking that and making something in your brain that understands that you've, you've done it right up to this point. Now you have to kind of trust, like you said, processes and people's really, really hard. Yeah. Um, and you've been in the industry again, we're just talking, just say when you came, you know, to North Carolina in general, the industry as a whole has really changed. I mean, it went, I mean, it's gone from one version to the other, all the way back to the invention of the squeegee, right? I mean, it has literally been a thing. And now what exists now for window cleaning or the industry is different than then. 
But for somebody like you who's been in it for a very, very long time, if we could kind of get in your head, what what has changed in the industry? What do you think like the biggest pieces of what it was and what you went through all these years to what the industry is now? What What's the biggest changes in the industry? That's a great question. And I haven't really thought about that so much. And you know what? If I If I take a step back and kind of look at all the years that I've been doing this, when we look at the window cleaning industry, one part of me says it hasn't really changed. Yeah. We use squeegees, scrubbers, right? We do in my company. Uh, it's still very prevalent out there in the industry, the same exact tools in that regard. We're still yeah. cleaning storefronts, still cleaning residential, large commercial, high rise is still all there. So as far as the industry in that regard, it hasn't changed. But the other side to that, yeah, there has been tools like water fed poles. That's been an industry game changer for so many. And it's interesting because who would ever have thought that you would just feed water through a pole and be able to scrub a window down and it comes out perfectly clean and clear. So that's been an industry changer for sure. But you know what I think has been the big one for me now that you're asking the question? Back early on, when you look at the 80s, even the 90s, we didn't have conventions. Yeah. We didn't have groups that we can associate ourselves with and learn. There's so much more knowledge out there. The American Window Cleaner Magazine, right? I mean, I, I have been a reader of that since 1997. Wow. I bought a small little company out and he goes, he goes, hey, I got a stack of these, uh, these magazines. You'd be interested in having them? I said, yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah. And I would just sit there and just read and read and read. And I'm like, wow, all the stuff that's out there in the industry. And But I was I was able to... Um, get with my peers in a sense on paper and like I wasn't alone. Yeah. So, but when I look at the industry, conventions, information, education, anybody can take this business today and build it to whatever they want to build it to within reason. It wasn't like yeah. that before. Yeah. Um, there's it's so many trailblazers out there that we can follow as I have followed so many mentors and so on that, um, back in the early days, it just it did not exist. So when I look at the industry changing, those would be some things that I've seen. But the core of window cleaning, it's still the same. A couple more oh, tools, yeah. right? But it's still pretty much the same. So uh, that's probably how I would answer the question. Yeah. Industry-wise, it, it really has. I mean, the same, I mean, to, to a certain degree, the same squeegee that was patented back in the you know, the, the early 1900s is basically what we use now, which is crazy. The, the culture side is the biggest piece. You know, I mean, I think it used to be looked down as just the guy that cleaned the bird poop off the windows, you know, where now there's, there's people who just are proud of the industry. They just kind of, like you said, conventions and, and the knowledge and people are out there, you know, getting more and more and more info and, and, and bettering themselves and taking this whole thing seriously. And I feel like there's more legitimate companies now than there may have been then only for the fact that people now see this as a legitimate thing, as opposed to just being like a, a glorified janitor to some degree back then. So it's definitely, I feel like a culture change. It's, it's so true that you say that when I, when I took that job, years and years ago, this was a large company. They had a couple thousand storefronts. It was not a small company by any means. I think they had 10, 12, 15 window cleaners, but there was, there was none of this that we have. No company culture. I wore my own t-shirts, right? It yeah. was drab equipment for the most part. It just wasn't, I would get my squeegee rubber every week, right? But uh, yeah, it's, uh, but they, I remember them like yesterday. They, they probably just did not even know, even though yeah. they sold a lot of accounts, they just did not know like what we know today. So that would be, that, it's huge how it's changed in that regard for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I, I know what you, like a piece of advice you'd given somebody, but I love to learn from people's mistakes. So I got to ask in all these years and all the things you've done, I'm, I'm guessing you've made maybe a mistake or two. I know I sure have. But what's one mistake that you did that you look back and that was like, you still think about that to this day? Like, what was that one mistake that you did in all of these years that still haunts you to this day? 
Yeah, that's that's another great question. A mistake that I feel that I made, I know one of those that I kind of alluded to it before, definitely stunted my growth, that that lack of delegation, that micromanaging er arena that I was in. Um, one of the mistakes that I made was I waited until 2009, which was my first full year in residential. And the mistake was no one's going to clean a house like I do. No yeah. one is. Ugh. They're, they're just not. And of course, that's not the right thinking by any means. Um, I could have entered that side of the business much more sooner than what I did. Uh, and I think about that. Why didn't I just do it? But I had fear. I was afraid. I, you know, walking into beautiful homes, I don't want somebody else to do it other than me. Yeah. So that one, that one definitely haunts me. Um, I think another one, another mistake out there for me would be, I know how to wash windows very well, like most of us here, um, but the business side, the mistake was I should have read more books earlier on to get a better understanding of how to build the business. You know. It's almost like going to the conventions and stuff and you meet these people that have been in business very, very short time, a year, two, three years and how fast they're going today. But yeah. they're availing themselves to information. And I did not do that. And I wish I would have done that uh, more so than what I did. I think I would be I know I would be further along. Yeah, well, we didn't we didn't. I, I still remember my aha moment where I mean, it was probably a year or two into it where. I would just call the day and go play video games with a buddy. And then all of a sudden I'm like, what if I just did this? What if I like focused on this thing and made it a, a something? And as soon as your brain does that, all of a sudden you're like, okay, this is my college now, right? This is my university. This is now what I'm going to focus everything on. And you can tell the guys out there that do that because those are the ones that are, how are you so advanced? You've been in the game for two years. Those are the guys that are quiet. Those are the guys that listen. They don't just speak. And then you see these other guys, especially online, but that just talk. They don't listen. They've been in business for months and they just tell you how everything is because they got it all figured out. And it's those guys are to where they are. They'll never do anything else because they're not listening. They're not learning. They're not sucking in information. And there's a difference between cleaning a window and running a business. You know, the business side of it, there's a lot of pieces that, you could always really advance on. You just happen to be cleaning windows. It, it, that's a great point. It's the, the service offering is the vehicle to take us where we want to go. It's, it doesn't matter what the business is that one might be in. We happen to be in the business of window cleaning, but we're really in the business of marketing. But window cleaning is the product. Yeah, uh, the service offering, but we're in the we're really a marketing company getting our services out to the inline consumer. Oh, yeah. It took a while for that to really click for me um, what this looks like and what this can be and what it can turn into if it's done right. Yeah, and I'll tell you, um, I mean, everybody here, we're at the right place at the right time right now in this business that we're in. I mean, there's a new five letter word in town, clean. Everybody wants clean more so than ever before. Those that are focused on residential, there are more people working from home than ever, ever before. And it just fuels growth if you know how to step into the, uh, you know, onto that platform of growth, how to make yeah. that happen. Because people want what we have. There is no question about it. It's just uh, getting out there and marketing our service. Yeah. yeah. And I got to say, the, 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 the last big question I'm going to put you under here is... A company like yours, you've gone through the startup phase, the growth phase, the growth panic, the great market, the I got this thing figured out. It's kind of on cruise control now. Growth is happening. Where does a company like yours go from here? Like when somebody gets to your level in just overall knowledge and the thing works, right? You built a thing. It works. Where do you go from here? Where do you take your company from here? Is there a next step or do you just ride this out? It's a great question. It's a great question. And I think everybody needs to really think about that question and how it pertains to them. So 
my mission later on in my business was to separate myself from the day to day. And when you can start taking the hats off of your head, it allows opportunities to put other hats on your head of other things that you might want to do. And again, I'll go back to that word vehicle. Window cleaning is a vehicle to the dreams of whatever our dreams might be if it's done correctly. So when I look at squeegee pros, I may not be involved in the day to day, but my fingers on the pulse, yeah. meaning my leadership team, which they are unbelievable at what they do. I don't even know how they do it sometimes. I mean, I look back on it's like, wow, I was I was there, too. They just yeah. do it so much better than me. <laughs> but now it's a matter of optimizing what we've created to take it to the next level. Sometimes I use the analogy. There's the Ritz Carlton. There's the Holiday Inn. They both do exactly the same thing, but one is so much better at what they do. So our mission today is to become that Ritz Carlton of the service offerings that we that we have as as a business here at Squeegee Pros. And when we look at next level stuff, there's opportunities out there. Is it another service offering we bring in? Is it to take it to eight figures? Um, we just keep chipping away, but now it's, yeah, size is one thing, but I think being the absolute best at what you do to where the inline consumer so recognizes that, that's the mission that we're on. And, and we're, we're, we're doing pretty good at it. I, I, I have to say that because we work so hard at it. Yeah. But with that, the other side to that is when I say keep the finger on the pulse, we have a, a leadership meeting every quarter at my house, and we're here eight, 10 hours. We're going through squad analysis, competitor analysis. We're going through uh, deep diving into what our weaknesses are, what our strengths are, um, what do we need to do to get to the next level and that next level is a variable because there's a lot of things that we want to do to get to the next level. It's almost as simple as optimizing your administrative department. Yeah. Let's bring the conversion up another 5%. Let's bring the customer job average ticket up another $100. You know, and we kind of get in the weeds with that, with next level stuff, right? To start focusing on how can we be the absolute best at what we do internally, but also externally, like the Ritz Carlton has that external to bring people in. And then when people come into that experience, well, it's an amazing experience. So yeah. that's how we kind of look at things now as far as the business goes. It's a yeah, lot of and, Yeah. When somebody's new, they have ambitions, some do, uh, of being big, right? Making money, having crews, having the, as soon as you get your first thousand dollar check, all of a sudden you're looking at, okay, when's my first 10,000? I mean, first your $10,000 check, the thousand dollars doesn't matter anymore. So you you, you go for this kind of big type thing. Once you've done all that, you realize the part that is not even the best part to brag, but the part that you really, really want is strength. A strong company is one that is so much farther away from failure. A strong company is what you build. And that could be, like you said, optimizing X, Y, Z, even down to optimizing the route or your your scheduling or your websites or your SEO or your anything to strengthen that company. And then all of a sudden you find that this isn't an achievable goal. Strengthening a company is infinite. You will always be able to chase that unlike being big or having a truck or getting a crew or every time you have a goal like that that's obtainable, once that goal is obtained, you're just, you're going, okay, well now what do I do? And it all brings you back down to strength. Strengthening company, big or small, is just always, always the, the meat of running a successful company. Well said, because what do you do now? What do you do next? I will never, ever, ever say that I made it Yeah. with squeegee pros. There's always something to do. There's always something to make it better. And that will never change. Uh, and, and because change is ever evolving outside our walls and we have to stay with that change. So we have to keep, again, the finger on the pulse or you start to slip backwards 
or you get stagnant. So yeah. I'll never say I made it. We just want to be, it's almost like how big can we go? It's one side of it. How big can we go with this? Uh, and how great can we be at it at the same time? So that'd be the quick answer to your question on that. We just keep going. We just keep yeah. going. Nice. Nice. Well, I appreciate you taking some time, uh, spending, you know, again, you've been in the industry long enough and done enough things that what you have in your brain is something that a lot of people out there just want to kind of tap into. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, if there's anything that we can ever, you know, get from you or know from you or contact you, um, kind of plug yourself a little bit for any of these guys out there. Yeah. Um, appreciate that. My phone line's always open and, um, I, I do have a, I do help people in the business as far as those that are stuck, uh, if it's okay to say it, um, window washing uh, because you know, when you, when you start seeing success and then you start meeting people that are stuck that resonated with me and it's yeah. like, I can help people. And, and I started doing that five years ago and I, it is probably, and again, take one hat off, put another hat on. Right. And, and it's, it's a dream for me. I get tears in my eyes sometimes when I see these people that we work with that are just knocking it out of the park after being stuck in business 20 years and they don't know what to do next. And a year later, they, they've done amazing things. So, uh, yeah, that's one way to reach me. Jim at squeegeepros.com is another way to reach me. That's four E's in squeegee. Squeegee, Jim at squeegeepros.com. Happy to help anyone on anything at all. I just love talking shop. Yeah. We all remember that one guy, you know, or that one girl in some cases that that when you started off helped you or did a thing. I still remember the name of the guy who gave me my first bucket on a belt the first year I was in business. Like those things always stick with you. When you get to a certain point, you get to be that name that somebody remembers. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. So well, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, cool. I thank you for coming uh, on the show either way. And uh, yeah, we will talk again. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com course. Let me know if I can help you in any way. Um, and also check out American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's awcmag.com. Get yourself a subscription. Um, but more importantly, until next week, go out there, learn everything you possibly can. But more importantly, go out and be epic.